Good morning and welcome. Today is December 20th, 2020, and we are here in the sanctuary of Carsters Bancroft United Church to celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. This morning, we have Rhonda Rodler with us, uh, accompanying us with our hymns, and also uh, Ruth Rodler, as they will provide special music for us. And uh, Bob Peel is in the sanctuary, who will uh, invite us for uh, offering time. And we will have the scripture reader from Zoom, Linda New Miller. And now, let us silence our heart and prepare for the worship service as we listen to the tune of the prelude music by Rhonda. And now, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now I'm inviting uh, Ruth and Rhonda to lead us in our Advent wreath candle lighting liturgy. Our Advent journey is nearly complete, yet the waiting continues with anticipation. We pause to ponder, to proclaim, and to prepare for what has come but is not yet fulfilled. We come to gaze into each other's hearts as companions along the way, discovering the love that transforms from the inside out. We come to discover love lived into a world too focused on division. We come to turn away from polarization to perceive the Christ in one another. We come to take up the challenge of affirming each person as worthy of love. We light the first candle, reminding us of the way of hope. We light the second candle, reminding us of God's path of peace. We light the third candle, reminding us of spirit of joy. We light our fourth candle to mark how love abides by God's grace. And now let us sing verse four of A Candle is Burning.
Let us join as one community of faith in prayer. We come to worship welcoming you, O God, into the center of our living. Where you live in our hearts, we make room for strangers and for friends. We make room for enemies and for allies. We make room for our neighbors. We make ever more room for the power of your love. We thank you for the blessing of grace-filled love, knowing better each day how to share widely of the love you shower among us. Amen. Thank you. And now we are going to sing together again. And I'm going to share my screen with you as we sing together hymn number one from uh, Voices United. We will sing four verses, one, two, and six, seven. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And now let us lift up our hearts to God in prayer. We are just about to hear the story of Mary, surprised and bewildered. You surprise us, O oh God. You reveal yourself to us when we do not know where to turn. We will hear about Mary, challenged and tested. You challenge us, O oh God, 
to stick to our principles when it would be easier to go along with the crowd. We will encounter Mary called to wonderful responsibility. You call us, O oh God, to accept the faithful way when the way of self-serving is so appealing. We'll meet Mary returning to her partner, Joseph. You remind us, O oh God, of the strength of our relationships and the joy we find as they deepen and grow. Thank you, O oh God, for the gift of Mary, her courage and commitment, and the gift she offered to the world in Jesus. We come to you with confession about our times when we don't have this courage and dedication. Forgive us when stopping to spend time with you goes out of the window in a rush and we don't get ready, really ready, for your promise to come to pass. Forgive us, God of mercy, for our misplaced energies and concerns. And now prepare our heart as we listen to the special music offered to us so that we can be prepared to receive your gifts into our lives. In the name of the Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Ruth and Rhonda, for the beautiful music. And now I would like to ask uh, Linda Newmiller to unmute herself and share their scripture readings with us. Could you hear me, Linda? Is Jerry there to tell Linda to unmute herself? Or I don't know how that works. Their screen is blank, so maybe we've lost them. Oh, I will look at the participants. Um, well, Linda is still there. She just needs to turn her mute on. And I'm not sure if she can hear me, but they are there. I will, I will ask to unmute her because I can't. There you go. Okay, there we go. Sorry, people. Our reading today comes from Luke 1 verses 26 to 38. The birth of Jesus foretold. 
in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be named to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly touched by his words and wondered what kind of a greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who is said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me fulfilled. Then the angel left her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has fulfilled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And thank you for um, sharing that scripture with us. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we could hear an amazing story from our scripture reading, which might sound as a fairy tale. An angel named Gabriel visited Mary and said to her, Greetings you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Well, it's no wonder that Mary was shocked and frightened. Wouldn't we be frightened if we were visited by a celestial being? Although we live in a scientifically developed age, there are still a lot of things on this earth and in our universe that we don't, do not comprehend. Aren't the following words of Jesus valid even now, more than 2,000 years later than he said it to Nicodemus? I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe? if I speak of heavenly things. The story we just heard is definitely one of those heavenly things. Everything that Mary experienced and heard on that day was beyond her understanding. And we, when we don't understand what is happening or going on, we may become afraid. We also know from human experience that Fear is not a good advisor. It can make us act unwisely or even unjustly. Sometimes 
it doesn't help when others try to calm us down in this situation. It is said that the best way to generate panic is to announce, do not panic. But it wasn't so in our narrative. Mary was afraid and greatly troubled at the angel's words. But God, who looks at the heart and therefore knew Mary very well, was sure that the calming words of Gabriel would work. Would that work in our case? And what can we learn from today's message for ourselves in this Advent season? As I could understand it, we can learn that God can achieve great things through our lives if we trust God and in God's love for us, just as Mary trusted the Lord. And if we are similarly humble and obedient as Mary was. First of all, we can learn from Mary that she trusted God even when things seemed to become difficult for her due to the news from the herald angel. I just to bring up here two examples. First, Joseph could have left her alone as he planned it really, but God took care of it and let Joseph know about the divine plans. Second, her newborn baby could have been killed by King Herod, but God took care of it too, and they could flee to Egypt. There are many situations in our lives when things seem hopeless or very difficult. This year showed us that it can happen anytime. The difficulties that 2020 brought to almost everybody on earth were beyond imagination. And it felt, and it's still feeling surreal, like a science fiction movie. Grief and uncertainty flooded our globe. But even amidst these hardships, we still could experience the Almighty's providence in healing, comfort, and the persistence we received. When we place our problems and struggle in God's loving hands, we can find that they might wondrously work out. However, for this we might need to follow God's guidance and instructions. Let me share an illustration with you about it from Robert W. Sutton from the Sermon Illustration website. A television program preceding the 1988 Winter Olympics featured blind skiers being, being trained for slalom skiing, impossible as that sounds. Paired with sighted skiers, the blind skiers were taught on the flat how to make right and left turns. When that was mastered, they were taken to the slalom slope, where their sighted partners skied beside them shouting, left and right. As they obeyed the command, they were able to negotiate the course and cross the finish line, depending solely on the sighted skier's word. It was either complete trust or catastrophe. What a vivid picture of the Christian life. In this world, we are in reality blind about what course to take. We must rely solely on the word of the Holy One who is truly sighted, God himself. His word gives us the direction we need to finish the course. Well, Mary trusted God's word through the angel, even though what she could hear was beyond her understanding. Still in her heart, she could feel that God will work out something wonderful and great through the child she was entrusted with. This is why she could praise God's name. Second, she was obedient 
though the an angel's message could cause incomprehension or inconveniences. Let me share the thoughts of the founder of the sermon writer com resources about this obedience of her. And so it was God that chose Mary, a godly woman, no doubt, but not what you would otherwise call an outstanding candidate to become the mother of the Messiah. God takes that which is ordinary and makes of it something extraordinary. The one extraordinary thing that Mary did in our gospel text today was her response to God's call. When told of the wonderful things that would happen to her, Mary responded, here am I, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. That was her one special credential, her willingness to obey God's call wherever it might lead, her willingness to let God make of her anything that God wanted to make. We should hear that good, as a good news. God loves ordinary people and God transforms ordinary people into extraordinary people. The good news is that God can do great things with us if we are willing to say with Mary, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Meister Eckhart put it this way. He said, God asks only one thing of you, that you dethrone the creaturely self and let him be God in you. That was Mary's one special credential. She had never tried to place herself on God's throne, but was willing for God to be God in her. Can we do that too with Mary? Are we willing to let God to be God in us? If we are ready to join Mary and let God to be God in our hearts, we can really experience the warmth of the love that is the reason of this season. We will experience that with this obedience come God's faithfulness in all situations, that we will be able to sing praises even when circumstances seem uncertain. We will experience what the angel put it like this. The Lord is with you. I believe that this presence with us enables us, us to wrestle all kinds of challenges with hope. Whether it is grief, pain, loneliness or illness that we have to face. Clinging to God's promise to be with us makes a real difference in life and even in death. The life, death and resurrection of Jesus proves us what our new creed puts like this. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. May this trust fill our hearts as we get in close to Christmas. May we also follow Mary in her obedience and may we be able to sing with her. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Let it be. Amen. And now let us sing together. So I'm going to share my screen with you, hopefully. And this time we are going to sing hymn number 62 from Voices United, 
once in Royal David City, and we will sing all four verses. I will ask Bob Peel to share with us the invitation, the MNS story, and the offertory prayer. Good morning. As we join Mary's joyful song, our souls proclaim the greatness of the Lord, and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. So with humble and grateful hearts, we bring our offerings to God. As we give in these challenging times in the form of checks or par, we allow God to make a difference in this world through our faithful contributions. Now let us hear a story of how our offering brings love, compassion, and justice to God's children, not only in Canada, but all over the world. Humanitarian aid for Rohingya. No person should be persecuted because of their religion or culture. No one should have to struggle daily to find enough food, a place to sleep, or simply a place to exist. Yet that has happened repeatedly to the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. For decades, they faced religious and ethnic persecution, which escalated in 2017. They were tortured and killed in Myanmar and their homes and villages were burned to the ground. Almost a million escaped to the town of Cox's Bazar in nearby Bangladesh, to what became in November of 2018, the largest refugee, refugee camp in the world. ACT Alliance, a mission and service global 
economical partner partner is on the line, is on the ground at the Cox's Bazaar refugee camp distributing humanitarian aid in the form of food, shelter materials, warm clothing, hygiene kits, safe water, and emergency medical help. ACT Alliance also hosted the organization Clowns Without Borders to share the importance of hygiene in a fun way. The Cox's Bazaar Camp is located in a floodplain. Mix that with almost a million people and the results can be a variety of diseases, some of them life-threatening like COVID-19. Thanks to ACT Alliance, many of the Rohingya refugees are able to keep disease at bay by using the skills they were taught and the hygiene kits they received. Through our gifts for mission and service, lives are truly saved every day in Cox's Bazaar Camp. If mission and service is already a part of your regular giving, thank you so much. If you have not given, please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of mission and service. Please join me in the offertory pair. Gracious God, with thanks and praise, we joyfully bring our Advent offering. We ask that our gifts be used to bring love to, you, to our community and love to the world. We ask this in the name of the one you sent to bring us peace, joy, and love, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Bob, for sharing with us the offertory prayer, invitation, and the Amana story. And now it's time for us to celebrate Holy Communion together. So if you prepared your elements, please get ready now. And I'm going to share the screen with you again. Uh, and you will be able to join uh, the responsive uh, readings through our Zoom. So please join me in the liturgy. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O God, for you are the creator of us all. You made us for relationship with you and with each other. We celebrate your creation. You created Adam and Eve and gave them a garden. You showed Noah a rainbow. You gave strength to Moses to free his people and taught Miriam to sing. You gave courage to Esther and loyalty to Ruth. You helped David become a ruler and give him a harp to sing with. We praise you, God. And yet they turned from you and fled your outstretched arms, as we do too. But you didn't turn away. You sent your child Jesus to live among us, sharing our fear and helplessness, and waiting with us amidst the uncertainty. We thank you, God. As one of us, he came, first a tender infant, dependent on his parents' care. He learned the ways of his ancestors and became an adult. He rejoiced with those who rejoiced and wept with those who wept. To the despairing, 
he spoke a word of hope to the sick. He gave healing to the rejected. He was a friend. And yet he was betrayed and nailed to a cross. And he died. But God, you raised him to life again and changed the word forever. Therefore, we join all creation in praising you forever, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before Jesus died, he had a supper with his disciples. He took bread, thank you, broke the bread, and gave it to his friend, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. After supper, he took the cup, thanked you for it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you do this, remember me. We do remember Christ Jesus, our Savior, and we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of love, send your Holy Spirit upon us and what we do here, that we and these gifts touched by your Spirit may be signs of life and love to each other and to all the world. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. Amen. And now let us say together the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone who believes in Jesus the Christ and accepts the forgiveness of sins in his name is welcome at this table. Come, for all things are ready now. And now we are going to get first the bread and then the juice or the wine. And as we take them, you will see it on the screen. We say the body of Christ broken for us. So let us take the bread, the body of Christ broken for us. And now let us take the juice, the blood of Christ shed for us. And now let us pray together. 
God for whom we wait. In this meal, you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. May your gift of love transform and enliven us that we may live lives of thanksgiving. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world, united to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us sing our departing hymn, which is this time from hymn number 64 from Voices United, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and we will sing all four verses. And now, hear the benediction. Our Advent journey is almost complete, yet the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love that we have reflected upon during this season are with us always. As we go into the world today, we take these gifts with us, treasures to hold in our hearts and to offer one another, and to the world. We go as God's beloved children. And the blessing of God, who creates, redeems, and restores, is with us now and always. Amen. And now I will change the view to gallery view as we share the announcements time. 
and I included a reminder of practicing good flu season hygiene during this season still as we are still not out of the water of COVID-19 uh, added with the flu that's going on around. Uh, I included many thanks to those of you who offer special music or story for our uh, Advent and Christmas Eve celebrations. Uh, I would like to thank Lynn Martins, Mary Ellen Spears, Ruth and Rhonda Rodler to share live music with us in this sanctuary and Agnes Buchanan and John Williams for coming into the church and recording their pieces here and Attila Sabo for the recording. I would like to say many, say many thanks to Rhonda and Ruth for sharing um, beautiful music with us today and also leading us in the Advent Candle Lighting Liturgy. Uh, I added a, a YouTube link uh, to the uh, announcement, which is a blue Christmas worship recorded by our moderator, Right Reverend Richard Watt. So you can have a look at it uh, as we didn't have a chance to do our joint uh, blue Christmas worship service with Didsbury and Olds as we usually do uh, every year. And we will still hold our uh, next uh, coffee and conversation, which is on this coming Thursday from 10. And I would like to, to share with you that I will be on holidays from Christmas to January 3rd. So uh, I will lead that first worship service of 2021, but uh, will be off uh, in between the two festival days and I wonder if there is anything else to share or I that I left out uh, or you would like to share for the announcement time that will go on YouTube well if no I I will stop recording and I wish you a blessed week and uh, I hope to see you on Christmas Eve celebration. And God bless you and keep you safe. And now I stop the recording.